everybody. Today is Wednesday, April the 3rd. Um, I am Tara Sullivan and you have reached my channel, Sully Stitches. Uh, this is a floss tube about my cross stitch, my plans, if I have any, if I keep them. I usually do a designer spotlight, but I do kind of show you what I've been working on, um, if I've had any finishes, um, things of that nature. So again, this is a channel about my cross stitch. Um, I am, you know, if you're new here, thank you for joining me. Um, if you are coming back, thank you for watching me again. This is my floss tube number five. Uh, so, um, it's been a couple weeks since I've talked to you guys. I've been just busy with work, busy with life, Easter. Um, uh, it's, <laughs> it's always hectic, isn't it, for all of us? Uh, stitch when I can, always. Uh, stitch as much as I can, always. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, what has happened? So I did have, I, well, I went on a trip. So I went to Minnesota to see a friend of mine whose birthday. So we visited with her for a while. Um, me and another friend went and, um, we did that. I gave her a really cute for her birthday, the, um, uh, Plum Street samplers, um, from my hand to, from my heart to your hand pillow it turned out really cute um so we just spent a couple days it was a really quick trip we were only there like monday tuesday and wednesday um but we were there um just to kind of go in for her birthday to spend a little bit of time do a little bit of stitching um so i did that i can't believe that's been since i talked to you guys last um feels like five months ago um and then came back just had a lot of work to catch up on of course it's always like that when you're gone for a little while um and then you know, we had Easter, uh, so my family came over for Easter. We just spent the day together, just very relaxing, very easy um, holiday. Uh, we didn't do all the big cooking like we normally do. We just got some food and just enjoyed each other's time and company. And um, to be honest with you, I enjoyed it much better. Um, I've been watching a lot of women's basketball. Um, my school, uh, so I'm from South Carolina. I went to the University of South Carolina, and so, um, we are in the women's final four. So I've been watching a lot of that, um, catching up on that. I think everybody's watching a lot of basketball right now, right? Um, get a lot of good stitching in as long as the game's not too stressful. Um, uh, and let's see, what else have I had done? Not a lot. I mean, <laughs> just I had to clean my house from top to bottom, which stunk. Uh, I had been neglecting some of my... Um, household duties, I would say. <laughs> um, I'm teasing, it really wasn't that bad, but uh, I had to do like some deep uh, dusting and cleaning just because the weather's changed so much um, here. We've had 80 degree days, like the past couple of days, just very hot, very windy, a lot of pollen. Um, I don't ever open my house, I have really bad allergies. Um, so I love these people who are like, oh, I just threw the windows open and let the house air out. I would have uh, the worst sinus infection you've ever met in your life. So I don't really do that. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, uh, and then like this week I've went and got my hair done. Like I added some highlights. <laughs> I'm sure you guys care about that. <laughs> um, uh, and that's about all. So let's get to the stitch. And I know I don't spend a lot of time with a lot of stories or a lot of anecdotes. I'm sorry for that, guys. I'll get better. I, I, one day I'll get better and be able to be a really good storyteller. But I do have a lot to show you guys today. Um, i kind of been busy, uh, of course. I did go to the framer. So I have a framer who lives about 45, uh, it's about, not lives, his shop is about 45 minutes from me. So on Good Friday, I kind of took some time on the afternoon. We got a little off a little bit early. So I went up there, took several pieces, which was really good. I try to take a good bit when I go because it's kind of a hard, not hard trip, but it's just, you know, two hours both ways. I mean, you know, two hours total. So, and then you got to pick out all the frames. And I had a friend who met me up there, my good friend Charlotte, hooping it up met me up there and uh, she helped me pick out the frames and we both took our let love rain which was a lot of fun um so we put on she we did it in very different color ways and you can see hers on her instagram you can see mine on mine um i'm silly stitches on instagram and um we just kind of spent some time picking out frames for me she, she lives very close to him so she'll just take like one or two pieces at a time um but since i 
kind of live farther out, I take a good bit. And she, it kind of gets overwhelming when you have that many pieces to pick out. So it's really helpful to kind of have some other opinions. I mean, he helps and he does a good job, uh, you know, but it still, still helps. Um, let me think. So from a stitching point, I guess I'll show you guys my stitching journal first since it is April. Uh, so I did, um, you know, finish up May, um, March. I didn't finish May. <laughs> um, I finished March. I did have six finishes in March, which was really good. So I think I have a total of 16 this year already. Um, I'll take it. Any finish I get, I'll take it. So um, I did kind of go ahead and get in the April um, monthly. So... You can see, let's see, I have a look, they have like the stickers have gold in them. So I do incorporate the full in my stickers. Um, and I, I know that word's really Southern. Um, and then this is my birthday week. My birthday is Saturday, April the 6th. So I did go ahead and get this week's kit in, which is all fun and birthday themed. Um, and then I do a summary page at the end of the month where I do like my new starts and my finishes um, before the next month starts. So it's just really simple this time, but super cute. You know, April, you gotta have a lot of florals and butterflies. So that's fun. That was my April. And then I will go ahead and try to get I try to do the other months ahead, like the other weeks of the month ahead of time. If I can get the whole month done, that's wonderful. Then I can just do it like once a month. Um, sometimes I don't get that far ahead, but I have really kept up. Um, you can see this is kind of my full journal. I started this one in August of last year. So you can see I've stickered, I've stickered the whole thing. So um, I've done really good in keeping up with my stitching journal my summaries, um, all that, which is great. And as I've mentioned before, I do like sticker kits. So you can see, I kind of get the kit. Um, and then I like, um, we'll just place those in the weekly sections. So these are, um, I use a B6 planner from Sadie Stickers. And my planner is um, completely blank. I don't have it dated or anything. I lay all that in, so it kind of comes in. So they have this size and then they have a bigger size as well. Um, so that's really good. Uh, so I know I haven't stopped about stitching yet at all. Sorry guys, it's only seven minutes, I'm pretty good. Um, let's see what else has been happening. I do have notes that I refer to because as I've mentioned before, I seem to turn this camera on and I lose all brain cells. Um, so I think I'll show you what I have finished first. Um, so I do have three finishes since I got last talked to you guys. Um, unfortunately, one is at the framer. Um, so I did finish the Scarlet House Stitchers alphabet. I posted a picture and I'll try to post a picture in here too, but I posted a picture on Instagram. Um, it's the new Scarlet House that came out right at market and it's on the cute little blackboard. Um, so I, I just took that framer. He's going to lace it for me. It's just easier for him to do it. Um, it, not easier for him, but it's better for me. Um, so, uh, I figured I'll just drop that off when I'm there. He'll do a better job of it than I will. Um, so my first finish is Pineberry Lane, Sarah Platt, 1811. I did show you guys this one last time and I had made some progress on it. I, I don't remember where, but um, not like I'm going back and watching myself. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But anyway, so Sarah Platt, 1811. I did change the fabric. Um, so this is a smaller sampler. It was done on 36 count R&R Lagonier Latte, and it was like 11 by 5 by 14 by 5. But I kind of wanted to do it on a 40 count, and it's really cute too because it has like a little pincushion with it as well. If you just wanted to do the pincushion, you could. Um, but I did the full sampler. So this is my finish. I did change the fabric. The threads are the same, but this is my finish. So I did this on 40 count needle and flax furly, the new kind of yellow goldish color. 
um, from Needle and Flax, and I think it looks so good. It is washing out a little bit because I do have a lot of bright light so you guys can see, but um, you can see that little, I love the little over one alphabet on, in purple in this sampler. Um, I love this floral motif here, um, but it turned out super cute with those little pops of purple and oranges. Um, love how that turned out. So again, Sarah Platt 1811. So that is one finish. Well, and then I already told you about this Stitcher's alphabet. Sorry, I don't have a picture. I mean, I don't have the finish of it. And then when I was at Hobby House um, retreat last year, I think in September, um, Scarlet House um, gave us this. This is Home is Where My Samplers Are. I'm sure this will be released at some time, but it was a retreat exclusive. And this one was done on 40 count Dolly Madison with 103 silk. Um, so I just did the called for on this one. I did modify it a little bit. So um, this is my finish. So you can see I changed it to home is where my stitching is. Um, yes, I do stitch some samplers, but I'm not a huge st sampler stitcher only. So I thought this was just a little bit more fitting for me, but I love the colors in this one. There is some over one. As you can see, I kind of um, <laughs> cheated and didn't fill in the over one in the home. Um, but I did go ahead and, and do the over one. I just didn't fill in all the white um, on 40 count. That was kind of hard, but I did just re-chart um, the uh, saying, which is, is where my stitching is and I think it turned out super cute not sure how I'm gonna finish it um they did give us stuff to do a pillow finish uh so I may do that I, I just I don't I'm probably gonna do that because I think it's a little too small to frame but I might do one of those boards too I want to see what size it is compared to the other um one I did on the little boards and um go from there so so those are my three finishes since I've talked to you guys last. I do have some starts. Uh, so the first one is, I've been kind of like start, starting like crazy. Um, I'll get to that. But um, the first one is MH1860. So by Needlework Press, MH1816. This sampler is just, it's so adorable. I mean, it's, she even says on the back, like, it's just really whimsical. Um, you know, you should embrace the whimsy of this. And I really have. These are not my colors. Like, this is not something I'd be like, oh, let's do some bright green as for a rabbit. But it's been so much fun just stitching it as is um, and having a good time. Uh, the fabric called, for, it is a little sampler, which is cute. I, and I did it on 40 count. But I think they did it on 32 linen from Week Di Week's Dye Works. So I did change mine again. Um, so I, sorry for my hanging thread, but so I did um, actually did the call for colors, but I did it on 40 count, again, needle and flax furly. Um, and this is my progress so far. I'm hoping to finish this up this week, but look how cute, I mean, look at the colors of this. It's just so bright and cheerful and wonderful for spring, but 40 count, Furly by Needle and Flax in the Call for Threads. Again, I just wanted to have kind of that little bit, it's a little bit better back here, a little bit of that yellow kind of twinge to it. Um, I thought it looked a lot like the picture um, did. Uh, so that is one of my starts and my whips right now. Um, and then I did also start, <laughs> well, can you, I don't know if you can call it a start, but we're going to call it one. Um, so the Wandering Stitcher and Jessica Sweetwater are, Sweetwater Stitcher are doing a sale. They started April 1st. Sorry, guys, I'm always sliding off the stool that I sit on. Um, they, um, they started a sale for um, Annie B's Folk Art, uh, Mini Mansions. So... We all saw this in market. We all, I fell in love with it. I know they did too. And so they decided to do a stitch along uh, with it. So you can follow their hashtag. I think it's Mini Mansion Sal on Instagram, but you can watch Jessica or Liz, the Wandering Stitcher, and get the information from them. I just jumped on the bandwagon. <laughs> 
like I always do. I, I'm really just kind of doing a start along right now. I have some other stuff I'd like to finish first. I think I've kind of mentioned it before. I'm really uh, kind of a monogamous stitcher. So um, lots of starts are, I don't do a lot of, but I did start this one just to join in on the fun. Sorry, it's super bright in here, so it's a little ghosty, but this is on the Dolly Mads Madison, but it's 40 count and the called four threads. Again, get that in there, good. And that is the Mini Mansion Sal, started on August 1st. Start along or stitch along. Uh, I'm probably adhering to this start along piece. Um, and then, uh, I think I mentioned this on one of my other videos, but uh, when we were in Shakespeare Peddler's room at Kitten Stitcher, she had some of the Lottie Da models and she had Rejoice, Always Rejoice um, in the room. And I just, I fell in love with it. Me and Holly Sands Creates Christine both did. So we were like, we're gonna start this. This is really pretty. So I got the colors for it and I decided to do this on 40 Count Sleeping Bear from Needle and Flex. So this is my start on this. So again, 40 Count Sleeping Bear with a called four threads. And this is a la -dee da Rejoice, Always Rejoice. Sorry guys. Not great at. <laughs> Rejoice, always rejoice. And this is my start on that. It's gonna be really pretty. I think it's like some darker reds and but that variegates down into like a pinkish color and then some orange, like orangey pinks and um some browns and greens. It's only four colors. Uh so that's a lot of fun. And then <laughs> um I've joined a group and they um they work on Friday night on any of the Hulk runs. Um, so the, they get together on a Zoom. There's about nine of us, I believe, nine or ten. And uh, they they invited me to join in because I was working on, well, working on the Halloween Hulk run. I had started it, um, but really had kind of lost my momentum and kind of needed some, you know, a little bit of encouragement on that. Um, so... I joined their group and um, it's been a lot of fun. We've had a great time. I've done two Fridays. Um, I'm a up late night stitcher on Friday anyway, and we start about 9 p.m. Eastern. So it's great for me because um, I'm up at that time. I'm back at the house at that time if I've run anywhere. Um, so it's the perfect time for me. But they, as a group, do assignment stitching, uh, do a lot of assignments. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be um, good at the assignment stitching, but they had one that they had started. They had done the Winds of Autumn, the strawberry. So I'll get the bigger, larger picture of the strawberry for you guys. A lot of y'all have seen this, a lot of y'all have stitched this. This is Blackbird Design, uh, the Winds of Autumn. So what I did was they had started this for Christine Hollis Hand's birthday. Um, in October and so the only rule was you have to finish it by next October. I was like, I think I can do that even though I'm really far behind um, because most of them have been working on it since October. I was like, well, I'm gonna start that. So I started this, what did I stitch this on? I, so this was a new fabric that I got, we got, Christine and I got at market called um, Butterscotch Baby from um, Shakespeare's Peddler, Kit Kitten Stitcher, the fabric she designed, um, dyes, or her son's dye. And um, so this is my start on the Winds of Autumn, the big strawberry and the Blackbird design book. So it's gonna be so cute. Now I'll be honest with everyone, whenever I stitch on Autumn design, I have a really hard time putting it down. Um, I think some of them are stitching it like on the 13th and the 31st of the month. Um, I don't, I think I'm just going to stitch it when I, when I have a chance, uh, just kind of not really put a lot of pressure on myself to stitch it when, you know, when, when the, <laughs> when the time calls for, um, because I love autumn stitching. So it's really easy for me to pick up. Um, I was going to show you guys this. So what I've been doing, because I've been having to cut it, not having, but I've been going through a lot of my pieces to do the designer spotlight, been looking up names, um, if I have the fabric 
that kind of stuff. And I've never really marked my, especially my framed pieces or a lot. So what I've been doing is I got this great little, just it's off Amazon, but it's just a little like printer, a little um, just printer that you can hook up to your phone. You can type anything in the label that you want to and then print it out. And so what I've been doing is like Pineberry Lane that I'm gonna get framed. I went ahead and like created like a little label for it. So Pineberry Lane, Sarah Platt 1811, what, you know, fa fabric I use, and then the call for threads. And then once I get this framed, I'll be able to just to pop this on the back and, and have it for reference. Um, I think it's gonna make it a lot easier. I know a lot of people do like the, the, the tags from um, Kathy Barrick or um, the note cards or the little pocket folders, but I just decided just to print a little, it's a fusible stickable label on the back of the piece and um, call it a day. Um, but uh, it was really inexpensive. It came with the printer paper, but it's just a little, Nim bot like in I, like in I, I M B O T. So I've been happy with that and think it's going to work great for what uh you know silly to kind of have to look all that those pieces back up again. Um, I now it's taking me a little while to print all the labels. Um, but with it being on my phone, it's a lot easier than having to try to do like a label maker, which I think we've all had in the past. Um, as I mentioned on Friday nights on our Zoom, we are. Again, I don't adhere to the rules all the time, but um, because like when I'm working on a piece and like like last Friday night I was close to that piece, finishing that home is where my stitching is. I was like, I just really want to finish this, so I didn't pick up. And I and I've been a little bit on the fence about my fabric, but this is Halloween at um Halloween at Hulk Run Hollow. Um, I've always loved this piece. I love this center block the most. Um, and I started it, like I said, oh, I don't even know when I started it, but I started it a while back and my goal was to do like one block a month. And, you know, two years ago I fell off that goal. But, you know, hopefully I'm gonna get inspired here and can pick it back up. But this is what I have finished so far. And I do love it. I just can't decide, do I want to do all nine blocks or do I want to pull out the center block, just do it by itself and not do the two blocks on the end, maybe just do like eight of these blocks, like the top and the bottom. Um, but it's a lot of work in these, but I love Halloween. So it's, it's not really that for me so much. Um, it's just, I kind of did it on like a 40 count vintage country mocha, which I think the colors are beautiful and pop on. Uh, that's the beauty of vintage country mocha, but it's a little stiffer. And so sometimes your thread, I'm not using MPIs or anything, I'm just using DMC, but sometimes it does seem to th fray my threads a little bit the way that I stitch, <laughs> probably it's just, just how I do it. Um, so I'm kind of like, man, that's a big piece. So I'm gonna finish this block out make a decision, do I want to keep on with it or just do something new um, with it? So we will see. So I've kind of that, so that's kind of like what I've been working on, my finishes um, and my, you know, whips. And then I am going to, I, I, I did a poll on my ver on Instagram um, about, you know, should I start uh, from cat from from market um, that Kathy Barrick released Vibrant Flowers, and she released. Um, but I wasn't gonna go digging through this basket. But here I go. Um, Peace and Plenty Farm. So, so this is Peace and Plenty Farm. Kathy Barrick, market release. And then this is Vibrant Flowers. Again, Kathy Baird, market release. And so I had um, Needle and Flax. She did the fabric for these. She did Thornfield. They're both on Thornfield. And she kitted them up with the MPIs. Now, I've never stitched. I know, it's kind of weird, but I've never stitched with MPIs. 
And I know a lot of people, this is their favorite thread. They love it. So I really wanted to give it a try. So when I saw that she had these kitted up, I was like, oh, I need to get that right away. So I got those and I was trying to make the decision. Did I, you know, which one did I start? And I, I wanted to start them both, I couldn't decide. And then I think I showed this before, but this is the MPIs for um, Peace and Plenty Farm. The colors are just gorgeous in both. So can't go wrong either way. Um, but I saw, so I was like, I'm going to do an Instagram poll and kind of let everybody get in on it and help me decide since I was like, I'll just start a booth. Um, but uh, so, and I, I think I should have put that as one of my options on the Instagram poll since it's my birthday. But so Vibrant Flowers won. Um, they both got a lot of votes, but Vibrant Flowers won. So I'm going to be starting this on April 6th. I, I don't know that I'm doing like a birthday sale or, you know, anybody's welcome to join and stitch. I love seeing everybody's like a one lady, uh, Nana's Needles, I believe on Instagram. She like saw the poll and she loved it. And she was like, I'm, she started it and it's been like four days and she's already like to the house and it is, and she's got all these flowers done. It is just, I was like, I'm so excited. I'm glad, you know, I think they're both going to be beautiful, but I think this is a great spring design. Um, so I'm excited to give this one a try. So I'll be starting this probably 1201 on Friday night. <laughs> um, if I'm being honest, uh, for my birthday, uh, which is April the 6th. Now, um, I'm hoping that I can pretty much just monogamously stitch this. And this one, that's my goal for April. Uh, we'll see how well I do, but, um, that I don't get distracted. But this is kind of my, really what I want to focus on for April. So, um, so that's Vibrant Flowers. And that's going to be my, really the only plans that I have of a start um, for, for April. I didn't think about this once I went through the basket where I was going to put this stuff. Let's see. Sorry, guys. Oh, please. Anybody that films, we talk about the mess that we have around us because we really do. And it's really hard to kind of find enough table space for everything. Okay. So, um, <laughs> close up. Hello. Um, so, <laughs> uh, 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 my local shop, they have their like Friday night stitch groups on um, the second and fourth Friday of every month. And my local shop is Pandas Crossing in uh, Malden, South Carolina. So it's like the upstate of South Carolina. So I had met my friend Charlotte Burgess who put it up up there. And she was like, I, she was like, I, I got a gift for you. And I was like, oh, well, thank you, you know? And she was like, this is, she's like, this is your first kind of like for starting a floss tube um, little gift. So. I was like, well, do you want me to open it on my floss? And she's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. So I was like, okay. Um, she, of course, she didn't have to do anything for me, but it was super, super sweet of her. So um, she, um, she's, <laughs> oh, this is from both. So this is actually both from both uh, my friends. So um, Charlie gave it to me, but hooping it up. And then Farm Boys Love Pam on um, Instagram. And, and they were so sweet. They were the wanted to be the first to give me like some happy mail for my floss tube. Um, so it's super, super sweet. <laughs> and they told me it was fine to show it on my floss tube. And then they, I hope they are going to be showing the picture, but this is them. <laughs> this is Charlotte and this is my friend Pam. So, um, so super, super sweet of both of them. <laughs> um, and so, I don't know what's in here. I'm excited to see. I've been really good. I got it like two weeks ago and I haven't opened it. I've been really good. My mom almost opened it. She she can't handle a gift. Oh, so they made me a strawberry. How cute is that? I should have read the whole card, but <laughs> but a little strawberry. Oh, another strawberry. Or yeah, a little strawberry. Another little one. <laughs> they know I have. Oh, and then a giant one. How cute is that? So they gave me all three little strawberries. So that'll be really cute in my downstairs cubby. Um, I'll put those with all my tomatoes and strawberry pieces um, that I have out all the time. So thank you girls. I really, really appreciate it. That's super sweet of y'all. 
Um, so that was funny. Uh, you can tell I get embarrassed about things, but that's super sweet of them. Um, so I have that. I did that. Um, I did have, I would probably do my Happy Meal after I do my designer spotlight. So um, I will probably have to pause this a little bit. I have some larger pieces that I have to get and they are framed. Um, I have them, they're collected, but I just have to kind of get them close to me and I couldn't kind of stack them all around me with the glass. I didn't want anything to break. So I'm going to start and then if you see like a pause in between, I'm not that great at um, uh, editing the videos yet. I'm still learning that process. So if, if you see that, that's what's happening. Um, so I thought this um, designer spotlight, it's mainly going to be Mirabilia and Nora Corbett. Um, I've done a, a good bit of their pieces as well, um, but uh, I did think, well, if I'm going to do that, I'll probably just show pieces with beading, um, that I've used beading or especially fabric. So a lot of the, well, all of them, the Mirror and the Nora Corbett, they incorporate beads and chronic and, you know, um, a lot of water lilies or watercolor threads. So I thought I would kind of just go through some of that I've stitched, um, like so some Mill Hill, some Nora Corbett, some Mirabilia, which I know it's the same, but um, you know, I do try, I, I'll probably interchange them. I won't mean to, but I'll try my best to kind of say this is a Nora, this is a Mirror. Some of this might be out of print, some of it's older, um, but uh, I thought it was kind of fun to go through. Again, it's been a lot of fun to kind of go through my pieces and um, kind of pull them out and look at them and uh, you kind of when they're up all the time you just kind of lose that appreciation a little bit I think so I thought I would kind of start first with just um, some Mill Hill um, I have some of the Mill Hill ornaments that I have done um, so thought I would just kind of start showing these I don't know all the names I didn't pull up all the names especially of the ornaments but the larger pieces I did try um, but I figured you know Dracula, <laughs> Bill Hill, <laughs> um, had this cute little one that was, um, eat, drink, and be scary. Cute little skull. Um, I have Frankenstein. I'll go through these pretty quick. Um, there's a little... Santa beaded ornament that was a Mill Hill. Again, these have all been Mill Hill so far. Um, little Santa face Mill Hill. Uh, this is a Satsuma Street. Um, the little, because he's got little Santa's beard, little beads and crystals. Another little Mill Hill full coverage Christmas tree. That is full coverage. Super cute. Um, another little Santa. And then this is another Satsuma Street. Frosty. almost had a panic attack. I didn't think this thing was recording. I was like, I've been talking 30 minutes and this has not been recording, but it is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and then I did some of the kind of standalone Mill Hill. Um, so Mill Hill did like a Christmas village series. So I did like the post office with a little American flag. And some of these are already framed. So I just you put, pop them in the Mill Hill frames. They're super easy to frame. You just pop them right in. So this is the tree farm. Again, this is all from the Mill Hill villages. I, that, they have like 20 of them. I don't even know. They have so many. Um, this is the country church. Again, Mill Hill. And this is a Jim Shore Mill Hill Santa in the chimney, I think is the name of it. 
And this is the um, Mill Hill Santa. Isn't he beautiful? He is just, his face is so pretty with all those beads. I love how he turned out. He's one of my favorites. And then I have this Mill Hill, uh, I can't remember what this one's called. I think it's Pumpkin Faces. But all those different Mill Hill pumpkin faces. Are they cute? <laughs> It make me happy. Okay, so let me get those out of the way. Hope you don't hear nothing crash here in about two seconds. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna start some of the framed pieces. Uh, so let me. This is where I'll probably have to pause and get some more, but. Um, let me get my list. So the first one is Mirabilia Persephone. So Persephone is, um, a lot of people have seen this design. A lot of people have stitched this design. She has a super long dress. Um, I didn't love the fabric that I chose for Persephone. I thought it looked like spring when I chose it, but it had a lot more blue in it. And her dress is kind of limey green. So at the bottom of it, so... What I kind of did was I just did a bust. I had done all this background. I had done the top of her fully finished and I knew I was never going to get to the dress. So um, much to my framer's chagrin, um, <laughs> I cut her off and because I had a, some of the dress done um, and framed her just top up. So I love how she turned out. I'm glad she's framed. She's better than that than just being on a scroll rod and never do anything with her, so I look at it. So, um, I know some people are probably screaming at this, this TV right now. Um, this one is a Nora Corbett, Nora Corbett. She did a lot of um, Halloween fairies and kits. So this would, I mean, a lot of fairies and kits for the seasons. So this is the Halloween fairy of that. It came like a full kit um, and I love, I love, those uh those fairies this is um the reason i did this one because it is like some beads in it as well so this is imaginating this is the winter sil silhouette so um it's all i just did beads all the top of it for the snowflakes they're just like a really pretty crystal clear bead i can't remember at the time if that's what it called for but or i just went let's just do the bead um so this is Winter Silhouette by Imaginating. And then I have one other Imaginating, which is Bethlehem. So this is my version of, sorry guys, I do have lighting and I do have glass. <laughs> so um, to make it a little difficult, I know you can just see like my setup. So it's just such a long piece. Let's see if I can go back here. So this is Bethlehem. Now I knew this was gonna be the challenge. Some of these pieces are super large, so, um, or larger. Uh, next one is another Nora Corbett called Holly. So she, her dress looks like Holly berries. She's another little pixie, super cute. Um, that ain't gonna work. So the next one is, um, again, Nora Corbett, one of the, uh, this was the Christmas Eve fairy. See all those beads in her wings, all the chronic in the tree. I don't stitch a lot of these now, but I still love them. And I just, they're beautiful. Um, this is a Nora Corbett again. This one is the um, Miss New Year. See, she's got the New Year clock. So let me hold it back here first and then I'll come in a little bit. She's got all beads in her dress, chronic for the clock face. Beautiful. And again, these used to come fully kitted. I don't think you can get them now. I don't know for sure though. 
Um, Miss Valentine was another one. I'm gonna take it back here. Holding that big box of Valentines. Stack her back here. The next one is uh, the Thanksgiving Fairy. I love her. So, put it back here. Look at that basket full. She didn't have a ton of beads, I'm just some around the vines, but man, her colors are so pretty. Thanksgiving. Oh, that's gonna fall. Oops. Uh, next one is Easter Fairy. You can see a theme here, right? <laughs> um, again, little basket, little egg in her hand. So cute. Cover my paper. The next one is um, a Nora Corbett. This is called Red Tree. Two little girls decorating the Christmas tree. Love this piece. And then the next one is um, these are Nora Corbett's as well. So Nora Corbett did a series of witches. So this one is Gigi. Again, love, love the fabric I chose for this. I love everything about her. She's one of my favorite pieces. Um, and then this one is Luna. Again, Nora Corbett. I haven't done all these, but I I really do like them. So let me take her back here. And I left the, she had like bat wings and I left them off of her um, and just kind of modified her hair to come around her shoulders. But I love that necklace she has on and it's just beautiful. So I think I'm going to take a pause, change some stuff out, fix the one that's about to fall on the floor. Um, and then I'll be back. I'll just kind of splice the videos together. Okay, so we're back. So, um, kind of got some stuff moved around. Uh, so again, just kind of going through Mill Hill, anything beaded, chronic kind of things. But um, the next one is a Christmas tree. Um, it's actually Christmas spelled out mirror images of each other. And it's all beading and chronic and just beautiful. Um, so, I can't remember who the designer is of that one. I apologize. The next one is a heavy, um, <laughs> uh, this is a Mirabilia. This is a Halloween berry. God, she's so heavy. Um, Halloween berry. She was in a magazine years ago, but I love how she turned out. That was graceful. Um, the next one is uh, uh, Mill Hill. It was in one of the Mill Hill books. These are all so heavy. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's a Della Roba. So it's all crystals. Let's start back here. It's the Mill Hill Della Roba. Let's see. It's all these crystals and jewels and treasures. Looks like fruit. I did it on sparkly fabric. Because, <laughs> you know, what shiny enough. Let's add a little more shine. Um... So that's a Mill Hill Della Roba. The next one is, um, so these are Mill Hills. I don't know if some of you remember, but Mill Hill used to not come in like kits. They used to come in books and then you would buy like all the treasures and the patterns together. Um, so this is a Mill Hill. This is in the Moonlight Dance book. I don't, these books are not available anymore that I know of. I, I don't believe so. Um, but you can see it's all beads, all treasures. There's all kinds of fun goodness in that pattern. And it says Halloween. Sorry. <laughs> um, the next one I'm going to have to back up for is another Nora Corbett. This was the Christmas tree kit from 2016. Ooh. 
the Christmas tree kit from 2016. Oh, they're cool. Wait, I'm sorry, guys. I know reflection, but they're big and it's hard just to get in. But I do want to zoom in some so you can see all the beads and the treasures. Beautiful design. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the next one is another Mill Hill. This is a heirloom heirloom harvest with treasures. Oh my God, I need a workout. Sorry. <laughs> I should have just stood up. But you'll see, I mean, this thing is covered in beads. It's nothing but beads and treasures. And I don't think there's any, it's the stitching is just all beads. It is beautiful. <laughs> It is heavy. Um, not heavy, but cumbersome. Uh, let's see. The next one is another Mill Hill. This was in the Moonlit Dance book as well. So I've mentioned before, I love Halloween. Love it, love it, love it. And this is adorable. It's like got lime green. He painted the frame. But you can see like all all the all the people are like fully beaded. Nothing but beads and treasures. So cute. I love that piece too. Um, um, this one is a pineapple welcome. So I cannot remember who the designer is. This is an old pattern, um, but a lot of us stitched it. So um, you can see the pineapple is fully beaded. And then I did my name for it in it, but this is hung in my house forever. Um, pineapple welcome. I love that piece. It's so cute. And then I just have a few more. Um, I have a few and then I'm gonna show you they're not fully finished. Um, so the first one is, um, this is in the Mill Hill Pumpkin Flight book. Again, nothing but beads and treasures. Again, Mill Hill books back in the day. Sorry, guys. I'll get my act together probably by the end of the video. How cute that is. I'm never, I'm not gonna fully framed, but you can see all the beading in it. All the different bugles and shapes and... Um, the next one is the... Christmas tree, the Mirabilia Chris or Nor Corbett Christmas tree 20, 2008. Again, these were all kits. Um, you can see like all those beaded, large beads, small beads. Just beautiful. Uh, the next one is a Mirabilia. This is the Day Nymph. Got a hanging thread, sorry guys. Day Nymph. She's actually a Mil Mirabilia. See this okay, like crystal at the top. I'm having a hard time seeing where I am. So cute. I'm gonna get her frame soon. And then I have another of the witches. Uh, this is Nora Corbett. This is Eva. She's flying on her broom. Now I've seen this done in a thousand different ways. This is the original with the call for. Um, I've seen it done in where her dress is red. She's green, like the Wicked Witch of the West. I love that one too. Um, I've considered stitching this one again. For sure, but I don't, it's hard for me to like stitch things twice, even if it's different. I don't know about you guys, but I have a hard time kind of stitching the same pattern twice. Maybe that's just me though. Maybe I'm the weirdo. Okay, let me get this one. <laughs> so this is Dressmaker's Daughter. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm gonna stand up for the next three. So this is Dressmaker's Daughter. She has a different dress for every season. It's 
spring is one of my favorites. This background I was not happy about. I think I kind of said some bad things while I did them. Um, but Dressmaker's Daughter. Sitting not much taller than when I was sitting down. Um, <laughs> the next one is... Mirabelia Shakespeare's Fairies. Love this pattern. Sorry guys, I have a really high amount set up on the table beside me, so hard to get close. And then my last one is the big one. <laughs> so this is Mermaids of the Deep Blue. I absolutely, this is probably the, my favorite piece I have ever stitched. This is Mermaids of the Deep Blue. Try to get it all in the frame for you. I'm not blending it in. So, it's two mermaids swimming up at the top. Absolutely gorgeous. So, let me set that down because. I would be very upset if that one broke. Okay. Sorry for the awkwardness there, but thank you for your patience. Let me show you those pieces. I knew they weren't going to be easy to show on camera, but I thought it'd be kind of fun. Um, I'm going to slide this over just a little bit. Make some room if I can. Okay. So, <laughs> back with you. So, the only thing... If you bear with me this long, thank you. Um, only thing I have now is just some um, some stuff I've been watching. I do have a, just a tiny little bit of haul. Uh, so I'll go through that really fast. I did order a fat half of Thornfield from Needle and Flax. Love that color, one of my favorites. I did order a fat half of Hawthorne. And then I did order a yard of Dolly Madison. So um, Needle and Flex, you can order a yard any point, any time. Um, and then I have some friends who will sometimes split them, you know, uh, different things, which is fun. People that live in town. I did also get, so I am in the Stitch Folk Bag of the Month Club. And, and if you haven't seen it yet, look away but I'm sure everybody's gotten theirs so far but this is the bag of the month from Stitch Folk look how cute that is so adorable then it's got like you know just little cream inside but that's the bag that came and then there is a couple of um project cards that she sent and then this beautiful, um, they're like finished pins, glass pins that are just gorgeous. I'm probably just gonna leave them like that for right now. Um, when I uh, got my needle and flax, the silks, um, the MPIs, Rachel sent me a couple greens because I said I was gonna do that red sampler, the red Irish sampler in green so she sent me a few to give a try so i appreciate that um we did get a sticker from the bag and then um i did get two uh vicky clayton silk kits one is serenity which yeah i know you guys can't really see anything like that but serenity and then i did actually buy uh with that needle and threads francis pool as well because I would like to eventually start that in my spare time when I have nothing else to work on. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, I have, uh, I usually kind of talk about what I've watched, what I listen to, that kind of thing. 
Um, so if that's not your cup of tea, that's totally fine. I've gotten some great recommendations. Thank you for the people who put in the comments the recommendations. I'm definitely going to start listening to those. I had a few on my list that I needed to kind of listen to before, um, but I have taken screenshots of all of them and I have made notes so I can get to those. I'm very excited. Um, so I did kind of watch um, Homicide New York. It was on Netflix. It was kind of where they interview officers about some, you know, really impactful cases that they had really enjoyed it i watched quite on the set i think most of us have from max um wow uh quiet on the set um i was watching on apple the new look and manhunt um i haven't got through the all of them yet but this they're both very good um and uh oh, shogun great they're doing they did a great job on the remake of shogun and then um, Rachel Neal and Flax was like, have you watched The Many Lives of Martha Stewart on Max? And I had not. So I watched that. That was super interesting. And then I listened to the podcast three, oh, which, wow. Um, so podcast three. Um, so those are kind of the things I've been listening to. I did have some shout outs. So thank you for that. Um the recovering book hoarder. I'm a stitch nerd um, and Amanda. So thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Um, and I think that is really all that I have. Um, thank you for, you know, taking your time. Thank you for watching me. Thank you for all the comments. I really appreciate it. You know, if, if you would like, if you want to um, subscribe to me, I'm not recording on any regular basis. So it does help know when I have a new video, when you can get the notifications. I know a lot of you watch on your TV and you don't subscribe to any of it. You just kind of like what, you know, what's the, what's next. You just kind of let it play. Totally fun. If you want to subscribe to me, you know, um, I appreciate it. I do. I read all the comments. I try to comment on all the comments. I really appreciate them all. Um, and I really have appreciated all the support everyone's kind of given me um, to kind of start again and to go through this. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I hope you like it. Um, I hope you, you know, come back and join me, make some comments. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, anyway, uh, until I see you guys next time, I appreciate it. And y'all have a great evening. Thank you.